very warm welcome to our service of Compline for Wednesday of Holy Week. Tonight we will be looking at the story where Jesus predicts his betrayal. I hope you've managed to download the copy of the Order of Service from the website of St Lawrence with St Paul Longridge. A few moments of silence before we begin. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We reflect back over the last 24 hours. The people that we've spoken to, the things that we've said and done or failed to say and do, and we prepare to make our confession to Almighty God. We pray together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Tonight's Gospel follows on from last night. It's taken from John chapter 13, verses 21 to 32, and I'm reading from the message. Jesus predicts his betrayal. After he said these things, Jesus became visibly upset, and then he told them why. One of you is going to betray me. The disciples looked around at one another, wondering who on earth he was talking about. One of the disciples, the one Jesus loved dearly, was reclining against him, his head on his shoulder. Peter motioned to him to ask who Jesus might be talking about. So being the closest, he said, Master, who? Jesus said, the one to whom I give this crust of bread after I've dipped it. Then he dipped the crust and gave it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. And as soon as the bread was in his hand, Satan entered into him. What you must do, said Jesus, do. Do it and get it over with. No one around the supper table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas was their treasurer, Jesus was telling him to buy what they needed for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. 
Judas with the piece of bread left. It was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is seen for who he is, and God seen for who he is in him. The moment God is seen in him, God's glory will be on display. In glorifying him, he himself is glorified. Glory all around. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Messiah was the one they had waited for. They had grown up hearing stories of his coming. Then one day he seemingly showed up and chose them to be his friends and his students, to follow him and to learn. He took them new places. He taught them new ideas and ways of living. He revealed God and showed them things they had never before heard or seen. He revealed God. Water was turned into wine. A crippled man got up and walked. 5,000 were fed with a few pieces of bread and a couple of fish. He even walked on the water and calmed the storm. The sight of a blind man was restored and his friend Lazarus was raised from death. They believed him. They trusted him. They followed him wherever he went. They spent all their time together. They walked together, talked together, worshipped together and prayed together. They were inextricably a part of each other's lives, bound up together. It was the perfect combination. Friendship, love and intimacy. What we most long for in these anxious days of isolation and waiting. These are the ways of God and they show his presence within and amongst us. But they are also the ground in which betrayal takes root. We can never betray one who has not first given and entrusted himself or herself into our hands and life. And Jesus knows that. Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. That Jesus can even be betrayed is proof of his love. Jesus has made his own betrayal possible, not only with the disciples, but in all times and in all places, even here, even now, with and amongst us. A question hangs in the air, but Peter prompts another to ask, Lord, who? Was Peter afraid of the answer? Did he wonder somewhere deep within that it might be him? Did he say to himself, it could be any one of us? It could even be me. Regardless of why he did not ask, Peter and the others must have been relieved when Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas. Perhaps we all are. It's always easier to look for a Judas than to look at our own lives, to make Judas a scapegoat for our own betrayals. We would rather blame a Judas than consider and contemplate our own responsibility. Many have a love-hate relationship with Judas. We hate him for what he did. We love him because he takes the rap, draws the attention away from ourselves, and we can be exonerated. Judas says, Judas will go out into the night, but the question remains, Lord, 
who? And that question is never fully answered. A piece of bread is dipped in the dish and given to Judas, and he will betray. Tomorrow a rooster will crow and Peter will deny. And the next day, the question still hangs in the air. Lord, who? It is the one with whom I have spent time, with whom I have shared conversation, to whom I have given bread and drink. It is one whom I love and to whom I have given myself. Amen. We turn from the Gospel to the Book of Psalms. Psalm 134, which we will say together. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth give you blessing out of Zion. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord. I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as an apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. The Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. We now take our thoughts and our reflections up into prayer to God. Remembering that we pray to God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus, our Lord. But let us first keep a few moments of silence to bring our own petitions to God. We pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this new day. A day that we've been able to rejoice 
and to be glad in. And yet, not everyone is celebrating. Not everyone is joyful. For we're living in a strange time. All over the world, people are fearful and anxious for the future. For their own future, for the future of loved ones, of family and friends, of people known and unknown. Lord, we come before you as your children your family. Hear us as we bring our deepest needs to you and as we praise you for your presence. Father God, we acknowledge that you are sovereign, you are Lord, and you hold the world and all its people in your hands. We pray for the world and its people tonight. We pray for this world caught in the grip of a deadly virus that we seemingly can do little or nothing about. Lord, we give you our anxieties and our fears. We give you the pain and the suffering that we see around us. And we pray tonight for those who are fighting the COVID-19 coronavirus. We pray for those in intensive care units throughout the world, in hospices, hospitals, homes, those who suffer by the wayside, those who are being treated and those who are being forgotten. And we pray for all carers, for professional carers working on the front line of this battle. We pray for family, caring for other members of their family. We pray for those who are alone and isolated. We pray that each and every person may be met by you at the deepest point of their need, whatever that need might be tonight. We pray that you will meet us at the deepest point of our need, whatever that need may be tonight. We pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, no one will feel or be truly alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as the days lengthen and we see all around us signs of spring, we hope for a better future. We humble ourselves and come before you in prayer. Lord, keep our eyes open to the beauty around us. Keep our hearts open to the people around us. Keep our hands open to receive all that life brings. Grant us 
the confidence and the faith to proclaim your love in the darkest places of our world. We pray for the nations and the leaders of the nations. We pray especially for leaders in our own nation tonight, both those in government and those in opposition, that they work, may work together for the common good. We pray for a renewal of your church in every land, in every denomination and tradition. We pray for leaders of the church, for archbishops, bishops, priests, deacons, pastors, ministers of the gospel. And we pray for all Christians everywhere. We pray for people of faith and of no faith in particular. We pray that you will renew the face of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Visit this place, O Lord, and all our homes, we pray. Visit each and every place of healing and wholeness and drive far from them the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And in the Lord's name, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us in its traditional form our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Before we go this evening, I'd like to read to you a short meditation that was written in 1993 in the midst of Holy Week. It's based on the reading that we had earlier. The night was black, supper almost ended. I thought he'd sent him on an errand, the keeper of the common purse. A hurried word and Judas was gone gone from our company and gone from our hearts. The moment of betrayal drew near, Judas's betrayal and mine. My name is Peter. It has not always been so, but it is now. I the rock on which he will build his church. The words even now bring tears of laughter and of shame. I, the rock on which to build or to be betrayed. My crime greater than that of Judas. For Judas simply fulfilled what was to be. I, Peter, had a choice. Three times over. Three times I denied the Lord of glory, the Christ of God. My threefold denial brought shame a hundredfold and more. And yet, when I met him, on the other side of the cross, he simply looked into my soul. 
called forth love and penitence and commissioned me to feed his sheep and to pastor his flock to the end of time. In peace, we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us his peace. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ dwell in your hearts richly. Tomorrow is Maundy Thursday. And then we have the three great days of the Easter weekend. Good Friday, empty Saturday, Holy Saturday when Jesus was buried and the glorious morning of resurrection on Easter Sunday. Do please check out the page for St. Lawrence and St. Paul and join us for these great three days, the Tridium, the three days of the Easter weekend. Thank you for watching. See you soon.